Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of a satire comedy films from 2020, titled The Hunt. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film starts with a group chat between several wealthy, left-wing liberal American public figures. In it, they vaguely discuss about hunting human beings for sport in a place called the Manor. This group chat would end up leaking online, and spiraling a conspiracy theory among the right-wing conservatives referred to as the Manorgate. The next scene then takes us inside a private jet, where these entitled left-wing billionaires can be seen relaxing and enjoying the flight. Based on their chatter, it appears that they answer to a superior whose name is Athena. Then all of the sudden, a drowsy passenger staggers his way to the cabin, palpably confused as to what's going on and where he's being taken. The drowsy passenger is told to lay down, but when he does, he gets stabbed on the neck, prompting an immense amount of blood to leak out. The passenger panics, and begins trying to defend himself. This is when Athena the leader steps in, and stabs the man in the eye with the heels of her stiletto. The passenger then gets dragged away into a room, and as he bleeds to death, we learn that he is surrounded by other unconscious people. We then move on to the next scene, where a blonde girl who from this point on we shall refer to as Yoga Pants wakes up with a gag on her mouth. She tries to take it off, but finds a lock that seals the gag in place. She then sees another gagged person across the field whose name is Crystal. It appears that Crystal is setting up a simple compass by the water. Without saying anything, Crystal walks away, and Yoga Pants comes across another person, and follows him to an open field with an ominous box in the middle. It turns out that there are 11 other people in the field, and all of them are gagged in a similar manner. One of them, who I'm going to refer to as Cap Man pries the box open, while the rest of them go hide because they fear that it might be a bomb. But then, they find a really terrifying creature comes out of the box. A pig in a dress named Orwell comes out. Cap Man then reaches inside the box, and pulls out a series of weapons. Seeing this, the rest of the people rush up to take some weapons to arm themselves. Yoga Pants finds the key to their gags, and they all rush to take the gags off their mouth. A man gives her a weapon and provides her with a very helpful tutorial on how to use a handgun. She then gets introduced to a man who we shall refer to as Trucker, right before an unseen figure begins shooting a rifle at them. Unfortunately, Yoga Pants gets shot in the head and dies. Trucker panics, and takes cover behind the crate with a woman called Dead Sexy. They watch a man trying to pull a Rambo by running up towards the shooter but of course the man gets shot to death right away. Dead Sexy makes a run for it across the field, but ends up falling down into a hole. Feeling sorry when she begins screaming for help, Trucker runs up to her, but finds that she has been impaled by multiple spikes planted inside the hole. Even though Dead Sexy clearly has no chance of surviving, Trucker pulls her out of the hole and tries to help her escape. However, they step on a random landmine and get killed by an explosion. A guy who I'm going to refer to as Staten Island witnesses the explosion, and rushes up into hiding as the unseen rifle shooter begins to shoot at him. He runs into the woods, and finds a barbed wired fence. There he comes across Cap Man, and two other people, Vanilla Nice and Redhead. They begin to climb over the fence, right when another unseen figure begins shooting arrows at them. What the, fuck was that? Hurry. the three of them run for their lives, but Cap Man gets left behind as an arrow hit his chest. With nothing left to lose, Cap Man begins blindly shooting at the unseen shooter, but it doesn't take long before he falls down to the ground, and gets blown up by a grenade. What was that? Another one of us getting blown up. Not long after, Staten Island, Vanilla Nice and Redhead find a grocery store by a gas station, where they come across an old couple standing behind the register. Staten Island asks the old couple about their current location, and gets informed that they are somewhere in Arkansas. The three appear baffled by this information. Staten Island then borrows a phone from the old couple, and calls 911. It is clear that there is something sketchy going on, because the operator seems unfazed by Staten Island's tirade that he along with almost a dozen other people have been kidnapped from their home states, and are now being hunted by a bunch of strangers. He insists that what is happening to him is Manorgate, a popular conspiracy theory among the right-wing conservatives, that spurred from the infamous text managers that leaked in the beginning of the movie. We learn that Redhead is from Wyoming, and Vanilla Nice is from Orlando, while Staten Island is from, of course, Staten Island, all of which are red, right-wing conservative states in the US. 
After Staten Island hangs up the call, Redhead is seen munching on some food at the grocery store, and not long after she begins feeling sick. As Staten Island and Vanilla Nice rush to her aid, tear gas gets thrown, and Staten Island gets shot with a shotgun, instantly killing him. The old man then walks up to Vanilla Nice, and finishes him off right after comically spouting that climate change is real. The old couple proceed to hide the bodies inside the storage room, and clean up the crime scene. They then have a conversation about political correctness, and that it isn't wrong to kill right-wing conservatives, because the conservatives don't believe in climate change, and are stereotypically ignorant and racist. Based on this, we may conclude that what is happening is these extreme left-wing liberals have kidnapped a bunch of people from right-wing states, under the assumption that they are all ignorant and hateful. They then receive a call on their walkie-talkie from one of their superiors, informing them that Crystal is headed towards the grocery store now, and so they must be ready. A few moments later, a cautious-looking Crystal arrives, and asks for a pack of cigarettes. The old couple puts on their charade, and proceeds to tell her that it costs 10 bucks. As Crystal gets ready to pay, she asks them which state she is in, to which the old couple answers Arkansas. Realizing the old couple is lying, she bashes the old lady's head against the counter, and kills the old man using their own shotgun. She tells the lady that she knows they're lying, because cigarettes in Arkansas only cost six bucks and proceeds to kill her. Crystal then takes the shotgun, several shells, and the old couple's walkie-talkie with her before exiting the store. The woman finds a truck parked up front, and peels off the Arkansas license plate, revealing a foreign license plate underneath. She also finds that the truck is rigged with explosives. Crystal then finds cover behind the trees, and listens to the calms. Apparently the culprits of this massacre are growing wary, because the old couple hasn't gotten back to them regarding whether or not they have killed Crystal. Not long after, a drone approaches the grocery store, and someone immediately shoots it down. Realizing someone must be listening to their comms, the culprits immediately turn their radio off. An armed man then walks up to the gas station, and approaches the truck. Crystal alarms him about the explosives, and the man whose name is Gary decides to follow Crystal. They end up walking side by side along a train track, and hop onto a passing train. In it, they find what looks like a family of Arab immigrants who don't speak any English, and Gary who is racist proceeds to discriminate against them by calling them crisis actors. Gary points his gun at them and is about to kill them, but all of a sudden, the train gets stopped. They then come across a series of foreign-speaking soldiers, who proceed to fish them out of the train. It is clear now that wherever these people are, they are not in the United States anymore. Gary entitledly asks the foreign soldier to help him, and starts spouting a series of conspiracy theories. But the soldier doesn't seem to care and leaves him, while the Arab guy who hears the conversation begins to speak in fluent English. The fake Arab guy finally admits to Gary that he's in on this plot to hunt down Gary and Crystal and the rest of the right-wing state's folks, but the train getting stopped by the authorities was not part of the plan. He then tells Gary that once they settle this whole deal with the soldiers, he's going to kill Gary, which of course angers Gary. Gary then tackles him, and a grenade falls out. Gary tucks the grenade inside the guy's pants, and pulls out the safety before running for cover. The fake Arab guy blows up to pieces. Gary, Crystal, and the rest of the refugees get taken to a massive refugee camp, and we later see Crystal sit down in front of an officer. She learns that she is in Croatia, and gets introduced to another right-wing American who the soldiers picked up. The guy's name is Don. Afterwards, the two get picked up by a personnel from the American embassy. During their drive, the embassy representative reveals that he is a liberal by making a comment that aligns with the Me Too movement. At this moment, Crystal instantly realizes that he must be working with the culprits, that are trying to kill them and moves to throw the fake embassy guy out of the vehicle. She then takes the driver's seat and runs him over, crushing his skull. The two proceed to step out of the car, where they find Gary's dead body and a ton of cash. They also conveniently find a detailed map signifying the whereabouts of Athena, and the rest of the culprits. Crystal then sits down and begins telling the classic children's tale, about how a box turtle wins a race against a jackrabbit, followed with a story about how someone she refers to as a jackrabbit storms into a house, kills an entire family of box turtles, and proceeds to eat their dinner. This reminds us that this movie is a political commentary about the divide between the USA's political parties, which are the liberals and the conservatives. Do with that information as you will. Right after she finishes the story, Orwell the pig steps out of the woods. Later that night, 
the left-wing billionaires who are the culprits behind this whole thing are chilling in their hideout, having a conversation about how extremely woke and politically correct they are. One of them then steps out to take a piss, and sees Don carrying Orwell the pig, while Crystal sneaks up behind him and kills him. Inside the hideout, the liberals begin hearing noises from outside, which puts them on alert. Orwell the pig then gets dropped from an opening in the ceiling, making them shoot the pig dead out of panic. While they remain distracted, Crystal storms inside the hideout with guns blazing like the badass she is. She stabs one lady billionaire in the gut, and faces off against a military guy, seriously injuring him. When she is about to finish off the lady billionaire, Don the Tool steps in, and asks Crystal to reconsider killing the lady because, well, it is not nice to kill a lady. But of course Crystal doesn't care. She asks the liberal lady if simply being a girl makes her redeemable, and the lady says no. No. Soon after, Athena can be heard speaking on the comms, saying Don's name and asking him if he's killed Crystal. Hearing this, Crystal raises her gun as she now believes that Don is one of them, while Don swears that he isn't working with Athena. Unwilling to risk anything, Crystal decides to kill him. She then sits down next to the dying military guy, and we learn that Crystal has military background, and has served in Afghanistan in the past. She then asks the guy where she can find Athena before killing him. We are then taken to a flashback which takes place one year ago, in which Athena gets fired from her job as a CEO, following a scandal caused by the leak of her group texts with her friends, wherein they discussed about hunting right-wing conservatives for sport. Athena insists that she and her friends were simply joking, but the head of the company doesn't believe her. Angered by this, Athena and her similarly cancelled billionaire friends gather, and decide to list the right-wing conservatives who played a part in making their text messages go viral. They pick out 12 individuals, and begin to concoct an elaborate plan to actually kidnap and hunt them for sport. Back to present time, Crystal makes her way to Athena's hideout, which is a really fancy mansion. She is forced to get rid of her gun, as Athena threatens to kill her with explosives planted on the ground if she doesn't. Crystal then steps inside, where she comes face to face with Athena, who lays out her entire plan the way bad guys always do in movies. Athena tells Crystal that Crystal was picked, because she made an online comment about the leaked group chat under the username justice for you all But here we learn that apparently, Athena took the wrong person, because there are two people with the same name in Crystal's hometown. This begs the question regarding whether or not Crystal is even a right-wing conservative in the first place, because we never actually hear her political views. But regardless, the damage is done, and Crystal wants nothing more than to kill Athena now for everything Athena has put her through. The two eventually begin an epic scuffle that lasts quite a while. Until they hilariously have to take a break at some point out of exhaustion. In the end, Athena manages to stab Crystal with a huge, double-ended blade in the gut, and Crystal stabs her right back by pulling Athena towards her. The two lie helplessly on the floor, and have a discussion about George Orwell's Animal Farm novel. Crystal then calls out Athena's hypocritical worldview on what's supposedly right and wrong, until Athena takes her last breath. Right after Athena dies, Crystal sees a bunny out of nowhere and gets up. She patches up her wounds, cleans herself up, and hops onto Athena's private jet. When she walks inside the jet, she tells the stewardess and the captain that she killed their bosses and threatens them with a gun, telling them to take her home. Before the film ends, she deconstructs classism by asking the stewardess to sit down, and have some caviar with her, and rides off into the sunset. Okay guys. That's all the recap of The Hunt 2020. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.